there's been a meme that's made its way around social media over the past week or so in response to the Reformation. And let's see if I can get the quote right. I believe it is that the Reformation is no longer about where will you spend eternity and if we are saved by God's grace, more about how will you live life differently. And so I, for me, as I thought about it over the past week or so, I had a chance to speak to this notion of what it means to be welcomed at Christ's table. If at the very heart of Jesus' death and resurrection is this idea that Christ's actions win God's love, grace, forgiveness, and salvation for humanity, all of humanity, that means that there may be this reality for us that as human beings, there may be some who are at the table with us who we don't agree with, whose actions we may find downright deplorable, and whom we might actually have hate in our hearts towards. And yet, this place that Christ creates for us, this table that Christ welcomes us to, allows us to come humbly week after week and to meet Christ in that moment and be sustained in our own brokenness for the week to come and to therefore be transformed by the love of God in Christ Jesus and to live in a way that welcomes more to the table. In other words, might we by our actions witness God's love, grace, and forgiveness? Might we witness Christ's death and resurrection in the way we live our lives and in the forgiveness that we extend to others in the grace that we extend to our neighbors, to strangers, and on occasion even to those who we may not understand or agree with. There's a place at the table for all of us. Last week I was watching the coverage of the massacre in Maine. It was the evening that the gentleman who had perpetrated the act was found. His body was found. He had shot himself to death, taken his own life. And they were doing a press conference with the local authorities and the information director, and I'm not sure if it was for the city of Lewiston, Maine, or for the state of Maine, but the information director had finished up his comments, given the details of, of um, finding his body, and was talking about how they were holding in prayer and thinking about the families of the victims. And it was powerful, tearfully. And they got near the end of the press conference and he gets, away, gets ready to walk away from the podium and he pauses for a moment and he turns back to the camera and he says, well, I want to remind everyone of something else. 
When you're praying tonight for the families of the victims, hold in prayer the family of the gentleman who perpetrated this act. They lost a loved one today as well. Wow. Talk about, talk about embodying the presence of love, grace, or forgiveness in the manner of Jesus. It's a powerful statement to make publicly. And I don't know how it struck me in the moment. I, I think I was maybe taken aback a little bit in a good way and reminded of this very notion. You know, that family, I suspect, going up to that horrible night, never suspected that their family member could be capable of such actions. We hear that all the time in situations like this. And imagine the guilt that they are carrying for their community, for their neighbors, for their, for maybe people that they knew over his actions. Imagine that they may not feel as though they're worthy to come to the table any longer. In that moment, that information director was reminding us all but particularly perhaps that family, that there's still a place at the table for you. God's love, grace, and forgiveness is extended to you, even in the midst of what you're feeling, the emotions that you're having. Both can be true, right? We can, we can love and pray for the victims and their families, and we can love and pray, in this case, for the victim of that perpetrator. story of the Reformation really is one about how we live differently in response to this free love, grace, and forgiveness that God extends to us as a result of the death and resurrection of Jesus, as a result of Jesus' actions on our behalf. I'll probably go on being a broken sinner. <laughs> I suspect most of us will. But Lord, I pray that you help me to remember that when I come to that table, Jesus meets me in the midst of my brokenness, just as Christ meets all of us in the midst of our brokenness and helps sustain us for the journey that lies ahead and transforms us for a different way of living. Thanks be to God. Amen.